Hello and welcome. I'm painting one of these lovely pedestals from the garden that's got some a tumbling mass of lovely pink flowers coming out of it. And I've sketched out the pedestal already, but I haven't quite decided on the colours. I had half a mind to go for something a bit cooler when it came to the neutral for the pedestal itself but I also usually just gravitate to something like my raw sienna or yellow ochre which has got that warmer yellowy tone um, so I just got out a little scrap of paper and had a little play with the kind of colours that I think I might use just so that I've got an idea of the way they're going to look together on the painting. And it also is a nice way to kind of ease into the painting process. And one of the things that's really important in the image I want to paint is the sense of light. So I'm going to really put a bit of uh, time into considering which side is going to be the lighter side and which side is going to be the darker side because if I can get the lights and darks right that is what's going to make my pedestal look like it is circular and three-dimensional. There's a bit of ornate uh, carving in this little pedestal and it's really quite charming but it's also weathered because it's obviously been living outside for a while so the loose watercolour is perfect to kind of capture some of those marks that are in the, the shape of the pedestal but they're soft enough that it reminds us that this is a, a kind of a weathered thing that's been living outside for a while. And I do like the contrast between the man-made pedestal and then the sort of organic frothy tumble of flowers. That always makes me happy to paint something like that. It does pay to be bold with the shadow side, the, the depth of the darker colour. So this purpley grey that I'm adding into the pedestal will be a very useful colour that I'm going to repeat throughout the painting because it'll be very handy not only for the shadow on the pedestal but I can also use it when it comes to putting in the shadows in between the leaves and some of the blooms when I get to that. And repeating the colours in the painting is a nice way to give it a good uh, harmonious appearance. My favourite marks in the paint are always the ones that the paint and water have created all by themselves where I've done very little and the paint and water has kind of uh, blended together all on its own. So one of the things I've always got to try and do is make sure that I don't fiddle about too much because then you tend to ruin some of those lovely loose sort of effortless marks and they really are effortless because the the paint and the water has done it for you but if you fiddle with them then it gets that forced um, overworked kind of look. At this stage all the colours that I've put in the painting are just the warm ones all the kind of pinks and yellows so it's got uh, a kind of a soothing warm glow about it but it's only when you add in that contrasting green that it suddenly leaps to life. This green and pink play together rather beautifully. Uh, that's why gardens are so delightful to look at. Uh, you see a lot of that colour combination. Putting in the dark parts of the painting is always the most exciting for me. Um, it's traditionally something that watercolour artists tend to save till the very end because we start from the white of the paper and then add in the darker and darker areas layering on top quite typically. But sometimes I love doing this so much that I actually jump in and do it sooner. But uh, I seem to have been a little bit more traditional in this painting and have save the darks till the end so it's now that that lovely dark perylene green has gone in that it really starts coming to life. Painting happy things like this really makes me feel like I'm sitting out in the sunshine somewhere and I like to watch the way the paint changes as it dries. It's, it's quite amazing I think the watercolour image is continually changing but very gradually as the paint as the paper dries and the paint settles. So 
things keep moving and changing and even the next morning when you come into the studio and the paintings dried overnight it actually looks really quite different so it's the gift that keeps giving watercolour painting that wildly vibrant pink really does make my heart sing and I do love it next to the very deep dark green that almost stands in for a black in, in my view. It's so much more interesting than a black, that very dark green, and where it's naturally blending with the very deep pink, it will take on even more of a, a dark neutral tone. So that's quite helpful when those two combine together in the shadow areas. And speaking of shadows, they're always one of my favourite things to paint. And where the flowers are trailing over the side of that pedestal, they will be making a shadow against the base of uh, the container. And that's such a lovely way to remember what a bright sunny day it actually is. <laughs> 